All right, everyone, now we have to talk about another leftoid meltdown, which is over voter ID, because it's still, and this is being led mainly by the neoliberals, but it's begun to affect mainly leftoids. They've begun to think, because of propaganda from the neoliberals using them like pawns, that the idea that person would have to show an ID, a form of ID, in order to get their ballot, and that this should be done as well for mail-in ballots, now, is, is somehow considered controversial, despite the fact that the supermajority of U.S. voters support the idea. It's something like 80% of people support it. A majority of every racial group, by the way, in both genders. Uh, so this is a, a pretty non-divisive issue. Uh, but the neoliberals have convinced the leftoids that it's evil anyway, and that somehow forcing a person to show their ID will disproportionately affect black people uh, or, or Hispanic voters or something. Now, how this is, is the case has not really been defined, but when people like Biden or Pelosi or something, when they're talking like this, they know that what they're saying is bullshit. It's pandering. But it's not even really pandering. I think at this point, I mean, even Dem partisans by and large, again, a majority of them support voter ID. About the only group I can conceive of that they're really having an effect on is the, the cringe fringe, the far leftists. Well, some of them want to eliminate voting entirely. They want an autocratic communist state. So I guess, you know, Antifa members are like, fuck the ballot box. And they'd probably attack the voting center. Uh, can you imagine them running a country, by the way? I know that they claim that they would want statelessness, but they would very quickly create a doppelganger of a state at the very least. So don't let them fool you. Anarchism's bullshit. Uh, it would be really, really funny because they'd all be gathered up. They'd be burning the ballots. I guess who, who you burn... Uh, the ballot for candidate A in this pile and candidate B in this pile, and then you have to judge who won by how f f high the flames are or something. By the way, it'd probably be more accurate than the tabulation in Arizona's Maricopa County, it seems. Uh, the fringe cringe, though, is wacky. The cringe fringe, rather, sorry. Uh, they're wacky for this belief, and now they're trying to uh, frame it as a civil rights struggle. There were a slew of pieces yesterday, and by the way, it's coincidental when three or four pieces invoke the same... Uh, a time-tested concept for propagandistic purposes. There's no coordination between their boardrooms. Just so that we're clear, when four or five legacy networks basically say the same thing on the same day, they didn't collude at all. Nor did anyone borrow anybody else's homework. That's just a coincidence. So don't get tinfoil hat on me. Uh, honk honk and sarcasm here. Um, I saw a whole bunch, like five different articles, four or five, uh, basically saying that this is the modern civil rights struggle. And then you saw a bunch of Twitter bots. And this is, you know, it's easier to tell that this is botting or it's shills or something. They're in the same building together, basically, pretending to be different people. And you see them invoking the same thing. The struggle against voter ID, the struggle to allow elections that are not going to be fair because there will be the possibility of fraud because you're not, cho you're not choosing to have people verify that they even live in the place where they're voting, which matters for local elections. And nobody ever talks, by the way, about local elections, except the legacy media the other day freaking out about populists slash QAnoners, the latter being a LARP, uh, trying to run for local office. A suggestion that I made many months ago. It appears to have them actually afraid, which means that it will genuinely work, which is why you should go with it. By the way, it's not Nazis and QAnoners. It's a bunch of Trump populists that are tired of uh, the school boards teaching critical race theory. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Struggling against voter ID makes no sense. And by the way, if you were to frame it like that and just say, well, I oppose voter ID and it's civil rights not to have to show my ID at the polls. The Americans wouldn't react well to that, again, because almost 80% of Americans support voter ID. So they have to dovetail it in. That's mainly what they're fighting against. So they're dovetailing it in with a bunch of boogeymen regarding, like, the Georgia voting law. Remember when Stacey Abrams came out against it and said, we're going to boycott Georgia businesses, and then they realized that Georgia, because of its racial demographics, has disproportionately a lot more black-owned businesses, and they started to suffer, and Stacey Abrams silently edited her USA Today op-ed. You remember that? The USA Today, by the way, never apologizing for that. Uh, attempting to do it, and, and they realized, didn't realize archives exist. They didn't realize archive.today is a thing. Whoops. Um, y y what they have to do is they have to make up boogeymen, basically. Make up lies. So it's not, if you look at the Georgia voter law, here's what it says. In order to get your ballot, you have to show a form of ID. You cannot stand too close to a polling place and be handing out food, water, and shit like that, because it violates pre-existing election laws. You're literally you're trying to buy votes. The problem is what happened is that people from a, ch a church, 
uh, with religious iconography or people with, with a campaign shirt on were standing too close to the polling places and they were handing things out to people. It is essentially an attempt to vote by. Now, is it going to swing a lot of votes? If someone hands me a bottle of water in the line and they have a, Repu a MAGA hat or something, that doesn't make me more likely to, to vote for Trump. But there are some people, some, a slim proportion of the population, that that would definitely influence. When you have elections that in some cases are decided by less than uh, uh, half a percent of the population it, due to turnout or whatever, um, yeah, that could be meaningful. And again, down ballot sometimes, you <laughs> the, the mayor won by three votes. Well, it's not that difficult to influence three people. And also it bans ballot harvesting. It bans specifically and explicitly what it bans is harvesting ballots for people that aren't your relatives or that you're not caregiver to. So you can still, they're trying to frame it as though the elderly won't be able to vote. Oh my God, grandma can't walk very well. She can't walk to the polling place and doesn't know how to drive a car. So, so now she's not going to be, able, her, vi her rights are violated. Well, no, her caregiver or any relative is still capable of grabbing her ballot that she's filled in and bringing it in. The idea is that there's less likely in that situation to be fraud. What's happened is that people were going door to door, and there were people charged for this in multiple states. This happened. This is objective. It's not widespread, but it happened. And you embolden people to do it more if you don't crack down on it. What happened is people were going around and grabbing up ballots from all the old and poor people. Money in some cases appears to have been potentially exchanged. Blank ballots that then get filled in by the ballot harvester. Well, if, if you got a team of 10 people and each person manages to do that 100 times, that's 1,000 votes. Believe it or not, in municipal elections, that can easily swing things. So your mayor might not have been duly elected because this wasn't cracked down on. Now, look at the states that aren't imposing these rules because a majority of them are. They're all like blue states. So, I mean, there's going to be corrupt elections there, but what we just saw with New York City, I mean, shouldn't really surprise us, ranked voting is, smells pretty rank, it seems. Um, you're going to have fair elections in most states, which is good. Uh, and then you'll have a handful of states that want to ignore you know, civilization, uh, modern convention, because virtually no developed nations in the world, only a few of them even have mail-in ballots. Hell, in some of them, I don't even know if they have a full-on absentee voting system. The idea is that you need to show up, prove who you are, you're eligible to vote, and then you get your ballot. That's a pretty modern concept. It makes sense. It's one that blue states appear to deviate from the rest of the civilized world on. They want to be in la-la land where if you can get a universal mail-in system and you don't even have to show ID to turn in the vote, that that won't cause problems. The problem is, let's say you have a state and they have universal mail, and that means they're going to automatically mail a ballot to every person, and then they can send it in. You will have voter fraud. It is inevitable. Because you're going to have thousands or tens of thousands of outstanding ballots that are not going to be filled in because, I mean, the person moved, uh, the, the, uh, the person died or something, but they got a ballot because, you know, they died too close to the election. There will be thousands, tens of thousands of ballots, even in a small, more rural state, that fit that description. Well, can you imagine, uh, you, you mailed one to someone who is, I don't know, addicted to drugs. Oh, they can sell that ballot for 20 bucks. I oh, think you buy their crack. I hate to say it, but there are people who will do that. The idea that the left has of, oh, well, nobody would do this because voting is such a solemn civic celebration of independence and apple pie and eagles and, and star-spangled bullshit. No, that's bullshit. There are a lot of people that will sell their ballot. There are a lot of people who say, well, my grandma died, but I'm going to fill in her ballot anyway. Yeah, they might get caught. <laughs> it's possible. If you audit the ballots, the problem is that now even that is considered problematic. No, we'll do, we'll do a little bit of a manual recount of a couple places, and if things are generally kosher, you know, it's only 5% off or something, uh, then we're not going to bother to look through all, all the rest of the ballots. We'll, we fortified the election, don't worry. Those evil Russians won't, won't make populists win anymore. This has to be tackled. And to frame it as a civil rights struggle. No, the civil right is the right of people to know that the election is fair. That's a bit, Citizens should vote. Nobody else should be voting. Unfortunately, at least sporadically, other people are. Make people show an ID to get their ballot and end the concept of universal mail-in. Mail-in should only be in absentee form for people who have a legitimate reason. COVID is not a reason to screw with the election system. That fear porn has been peddled to the population now for the better part of a year. And it's much to the detriment of our society. That's about all. Peace out.